right. Okay. I am excited to talk about this topic today. So I know a lot of you are brand new to the group. So I want to welcome you to the Convert with Confidence group. This is the group for coaches and small business owners and healers who are ready to really stop pleasing, stop seeking validation, and who want to start broadcasting their brilliance so that they can start, to, you can start to move your sales into five and even six figure months. So if you're ready to learn how to build the confidence, build the engagement that you need and eliminate things like uh, like perfectionism and people pleasing and things like that, if you're ready to go, First of all, let me know who's here today. Let me know who's on the call. Drop on in. Uh, if you're watching from the Facebook group, click the, the click the link in the description and that's gonna drop you into the actual live so that I can see your comments. So click the link, scroll to the bottom of the description and you'll see an Ecamm link and then join that and then I'll be able to see your comments here and you can actually get some live engagement um, if you drop into that link. So go ahead for those of you joining in. Uh, welcome to the weekly live stream today. We're going to talk about perfectionism and we're going to talk about procrastination. But specifically, I want to talk about the procrastination that comes from perfectionism and inhibits us as coaches and leaders and consultants or healers to start to really put ourselves out there. So as we get started here, first of all, let me know who's here today. Who's here on the call today? Who's uh, who's joining us? Where are you joining from? Go ahead and comment. Let me know who's here. And if you're if you're watching from the Facebook group, be sure to click the link in the description to join us in the actual live stream so I can see your comments. It'll be an eCam link at the bottom of the description. So Let's talk about this topic here today and see if everybody can get in here. So, all right. Is everybody, let's see if people can join me here today. Make sure we have the right link. <clears throat> let's see here. So for those of you jumping into the group and you're if you're watching this live from the group, be sure to jump in at the link in the description and that way you can engage. Um, nice to see you. Um, I don't know who VK is. Let me see here. You may have to actually, uh, let's see who we got here. <clears throat> in the group. In the description to G all right, so let's go right in. So VK, nice to have you here. Who else is here watching today? Who else is here? Join the party, join the engagement. Uh, who else do we have here on the line as we get started? Who else do we have here today? Yeah. Let's see, as comments are rolling in. Who else do we have here today? And, okay, Vern K. Nice to see you here. I saw you come in, I think it was earlier today. So welcome to the Convert With Confidence Facebook group. Again, as you all are tuning in here today, be sure to go, I'm gonna keep referencing the link in the description um, to join the live, to engage, and to, and to ask your questions, to get your questions asked. So first of all, why are we talking about perfection and procrastination here today? Because typically we see things for just procrastination articles and videos and books or just perfectionism. But what a lot of people don't seem to make the connection and especially us as business owners is that procrastination comes from perfectionism. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that procrastination actually comes from, it comes from fear. It comes from a needing to have a certain outcome or a fear of failure. So what comes up for you guys? What's coming up for you? Just drop it in the comments. Let me know what's coming up for you. Do you have a fear of failure? Do you have a fear of success? Oftentimes we might fear actually doing really well and like I can't even handle it. Or maybe it's imposter syndrome. Maybe you have a fear of being found out like you're not going to be good enough. So when you have that certification, you'll be good enough. When you have that degree, you'll be good enough. 
right? Does this sound familiar to you guys? Let me know. Is this resonating with you? Put, put yes in the comments if this is resonating with you as you're dropping in here today. <clears throat> What's coming up for you guys? What's... What's keeping you, like, where is perfect for you? How do you know when you're going to be perfect? Right? What is it for you? Is it fear of success? Is it fear of failure? Is it fear of being found out? What do you have a fear of? Mm -hmm. Fear of success. What is next? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. fear of success. Uh-huh. How about everyone else as they're jumping in here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why is this? Why do we need to tackle this? Like, why? Why not just continue going and, and running our businesses and, and moving through our lives with this need to be perfect? Why not just continue to do it? Well, here's what happens. Yeah. Fear of letting people down. Exactly. It's like, it's like they find out I'm not good enough. I'm not who I, I said I was, who I sold myself to be. And then they're going to be disappointed and walk away. And then it's like a confirmation bias. It's like now you're getting that confirmation. You're not as good or as talented or as skilled as you thought you were. So there's this thing called confirmation bias that actually starts to control the situation. So... How, how, does, how does perfectionism hold us back in our business and why is it important to tackle this? Because if we don't talk about the why, then it's just this thing that's floating around in space and, and we're not paying attention to. So first of all, here's what happens when you're on the verge of like, you know, really going all in in your business and really putting yourself out there. Fear of not following through. Yeah, thank, thank you for sharing. So what ends up happening is you end up having one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake at the same time. Imagine going through your life. Imagine running your business with the with one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake at the same time. Does, does it feel that way? It's like this. <laughs> it's like imagine driving a car with one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake at the same time. Right. It's horrible. It, it, it drains your energy, right? It drains your energy to, it's like you have a monkey on your back. You're like wearing this weight. And here's the thing. Here's, here's the insight. Here's the first insight that really helped me move forward. And, and this is what I teach my private, private clients as well, is first of all, to realize that you will never and you can never ever achieve perfect like it doesn't exist being perfect actually doesn't exist so what ends up happening is throughout your whole life and some people spend their whole lives like this is you have one foot on the gas one foot on the brake and you're you end up draining yourself you're, you leak energy from all of this. You leak energy from the fear and from having one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake at the same time. Again, it's like it's like you're, you're being dragged through the mud and it's like you want to go, but you don't. And there's this, this thing going on right here. You guys know what I'm talking about? There's like this, should I, shouldn't I? And like, but you know, you, you know, you want it. You know, deep down you want it. And I can almost guarantee you, and I want to know what you guys have to say. I can almost guarantee you on a deeper level that you know deep down you really have something of value. Is that fair to say to you guys watching? Do you deeply know you have something of value to share with the world? A gift, a message, a talent, a skill? Let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up or give me a like. Give me a yes in the comments. If is even though a part of you is like, oh, I don't want to go out there. I don't want to raise my hand. There's a deeper part of you that's like it's there and it keeps it's like a scratch. It's like it's like an itch. You just have to keep scratching because it keeps knocking at the door. Yeah. Thank. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I know. Yeah. So it's like you can't ignore it. It's like an itch that you just keep having to scratch. And what if you started to pay more attention to that part of you? I wonder what that part of you would tell you, right? So 
Here's what ends up happening. And this is how we end up sabotaging our business when we are in this mode of like putting our foot on the gas and the brake at the same time. And it's because we're waiting to be perfect. We're waiting for that degree. We're waiting to get that certification. We're waiting to have finished that class or that course. We're waiting for our, our husband or wife to give us a thumbs up. We're waiting for our customers and clients to give us a thumbs up. Like, what are you waiting for, first of all? What are you waiting for to happen? How will you know? And we're going to do some hypnosis here. How fun is that? This is going to start creating new insights for you and start churning the gears that are going on. So how do you know when to stop procrastinating? How do you know when to stop? Have you thought about that? Where's the line? When is the time to stop procrastinating? What, where's the key? What's the cue? What is it for you guys? How will you know it's time to stop procrastinating? Is it when I feel confident? Oftentimes we procrastinate until we feel confident, but here's the thing. Confidence never comes first. It takes you doing things to build confidence. So here's how we keep us in this paralysis our entire lives and why our business never really takes off. It's like, I remember when I first started my business, I had, I had my foot on the gas and the brake for like the first five years. Can you guys relate to this? You have your foot on the gas and the brake right now, or maybe you have had in the past. Put yes in the comments. Are you, do you have your foot on both the brake and the gas? It's like some days you're like, let's go. I am all in. Let's go talk to people. Let's go talk to customers. Let's go do it. And then there's like other days you're like, oh God, why did I do that? I shouldn't have done that. Oh, what was I thinking? I'm not good enough. Do you have these roller coasters? going on in your life, in your business. When I'm not so stressed, I can, uh, when I am, not, when I'm so stressed, I cannot put it off. Yeah. 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 So how do we cut, how do we cut this cord? Right. So let's talk about this. So, um, so Joe, yeah, thank you for sharing. And Verna, yeah, thank you for sharing. Like, so how, how do we take our foot off the brake here? What, in fact, imagine this. What, what would your business be like if you took your foot off the brake right now? What, would ha what might happen? And I can guarantee you there's, there's probably something coming up for you. Fear, anxiety. Oh my gosh, what if I just went all in? What if I really started to take my skill set seriously and I really started to put myself out there, right? What's coming up for you? Is there... Is there anxiety? Is there fear? When you think about putting yourself out there? But here's the thing. Here's, yeah, you would start. Yeah, Verna, what would that look like? What does what does starting look like to you? I would be curious, what does starting look like to you? So here's what happens. Here, here's the biggest hindrance. And here's what's really important about finally bringing up the gas pedal. I'm sorry, the break. Here's what happens if you don't bring up the break is that your business, and I can guarantee you if you're not attracting the customers and clients you want, a launch, awesome, yes, a launch, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. If you are not attracting the customers and clients you want or you're not getting any clients or customers, it's because when you're operating out of perfectionism, when you're waiting until you're perfect, your business becomes about you. It becomes more self-centered versus client and customer centered. Do you see that? Do you want to run a business where everything rides on you? Even your customer's results ride on you 100%. Because perfectionism oftentimes is correlated with an over responsibility of client results. Let that sink in for a minute. How many of you can relate to this? Do you feel like you have an over, like an unhealthy amount of responsibility of your clients getting results? You know what I'm talking about? I used to do this all the time. Like if my clients weren't getting results, I blamed myself. I was like, oh my God, 
they're not transforming. They're not, they're not building their, they're not making more money in their business. I'm not seeing any changes. I must be doing something wrong. I'm the failure. I'm not good enough. Do you see that? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Put yes in the comments. Like you, you take on way too much. You take on responsibility that is not yours. Who does this? And maybe you're a people pleaser. It's because you're people pleasing. This was something I'm telling you, the mass major, the, the vast majority of the population are people pleasers. And this will keep your foot on the gas and the brake at the same time. Because it's like you have to tiptoe around your customers and your audience. You have to tiptoe around the type of posts you send. You, do you edit? Do you go back and edit your copy or your social media posts? Because you're worried how people are going to take it. You're worried about offending people. How many of you struggle with this? Put the word offend in the comments. Do you struggle with the fear of offending people? And then you end up not doing anything or you kind of soften it. You like, you, you, you know, you end up being nice. You take yourself out of it. Yeah. What's coming up for you guys? What's, what's resonating with you? It hits home, right? Doesn't this hit home? I get it. Like I know the path. I know the journey. And I can also tell you what's on the other side is so freeing and beautiful. And that's why, again, why I built this group. So yeah, you're like tiptoeing around and guess what? You're not going to get the response and the engagement. You're going to get like lukewarm attendance. You're going to get like lukewarm audience. You're going to get people who are like, yeah, I, it, you sound nice. Like I like what you have to say, but I don't believe you. I'm not going to buy from you. I'm not going to join your Facebook group. I'm not going to commit to your program, right? Yeah, you guys want to talk about deleted so many. Um, not sure what you mean by deleted. Um, yeah, oh yeah, you deleted so many. Yeah, so we go back and we tiptoe and we edit ourselves. And I can guarantee you, if you're doing this in your business, you're also doing this in your personal life. Is that, is that fair to say? Have your, your personal habits spilled into your business? So the way we operate in our personal relationships also spills in with our audience and our clients. Why? Because here's the thing. We start to edit ourselves. Typically, always, when there's love or money at stake. Anytime there is love or money on the line, we we go into tiptoe mode. We go into, should I? And here's the thing. When you don't polarize, when you don't scream to your audience, when you don't speak your language, when you don't talk the language of your audience, they can't find you. They can't see you. You end up getting overlooked. You get overlooked and you blend in with every other coach out there, with every other consultant out there. Because every other consultant and coach and healer out there is really trying to be nice. They're trying to be nice. They're not trying to offend anybody. They're like, are you okay? You're over, you're taking too much responsibility. And here's the thing. In this type of situation, nobody is leading. In this type of situation, nobody is leading. And you will, high ticket buyers, if you're looking to switch over, if you've been in business for a while, or maybe you're just starting. In fact, how many of you are brand new? If you're brand new, how, do you have a business? Put, put new in the comments if you're brand new, if you're like an aspiring coach or consultant or healer. Put new in the comments. I'm just really curious about, um, so some of you are already doing this. Okay, all right, yep. So actually, who, what do you do, guys? Drop it in the comments. What do you do? What's your business? Are you a coach? What kind of coach are you? Are you a consultant? What kind of consultant? Are you a healer? What kind of healer are you? Drop it in the comments. I really want to see what you guys do as I get to know you all. Awesome. Brand new here. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the, you're, you're in the right place at the right time because I wish I had someone <laughs> to tell me all this when I first started my business. Leadership. Awesome. Love it. 
What other coaches, what other kind of coaches or consultants or healers do we have here? Or small business owners? Drop it in the comments as we go. Aspiring newbie, awesome, you're in the right place. Um, you know, again, the reason why I created this group and you're, maybe you're feeling something similar is I had the funnels, I had the Facebook group, I had the emails, I had the, I even had the audience. I even had the audience and nobody cared about what I had to offer. I even had the audience and nobody was buying. Maybe one or two people here. Can you guys relate to that? Like maybe you even have an audience and people aren't paying attention to you. You're getting overlooked. That can be even more frustrating. Like you have people to talk to and they're like, eh, they're going to the next coach, the next consultant, the next healer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So what's the next step? What's the next step? It's not to go do another funnel or go do a different program or blame your coach or blame your, your clients. We often will go into this place of making others wrong. But here's here's what's missing is instead of going out here and trying a million different uh, executing a bunch of other things, we got to turn inside and eliminate this people pleasing, eliminate this need to be perfect, eliminate this tiptoeing that's going on. Because your dream customers, your dream clients cannot see you. They can't hear you. They're looking for you. They're out there. They're looking for you. They're like, where, who can help me? Who, who can help me? Where, where is that person who I know it can help me? And all that takes is this. They just need to hear you. They just need to see you and you will magnetically draw them in. But the problem is, is when you're, when you, when you have the foot on the gas and the brake at the same time, you're not going to draw anyone in. There is no polarization going on. You're not going to push away anyone and you're not going to bring anyone in. There is no polarization. Think about like a battery, right? There's two ends of a battery that flip together. If you try to do it the other way or magnets, they push away. And this is how you're going to attract more money. This is how you're going to attract the right audience, not just a audience. Don't you want the right audience? Don't you want people who are excited and want to hear you, right? Eliminate self-doubt. Yeah, part of this is the self-doubt. We're going to talk about a lot of self-doubt here. And that doubt comes from what are you doubting, first of all? Joe, what are you doubting? What are you doubting? Now I'm going to, I'm going to be throwing in hypnosis to, to kick things off and to get, get gears churning in here as we go. And that's just my gift to you all because it's, it can shift things really quickly. But as we continue to go down here is also when you are holding yourself back and it's, it's, it's painful for me to watch. It's painful for me to watch because I know so many of you have an amazing gift to share with the world and they they people need it people need you but you're holding back because you fear criticism you fear other people judging you because you're not perfect well let me ask you something are you trying to sell to those people or are you trying to sell to the people who aren't going to judge you based on how not perfect you are right who is your audience who are you going to cater to? Who are you going to give your attention to? You see? And here's what happens is when you're, when you're always striving to be perfect, is that you're never satisfied with yourself. You're never satisfied with your accomplishments. You could close, right, 10 more clients at your price point, and you're going to go right back into the same loop of I'm not good enough. You're going to find another reason why you're not good enough. You're going to find another reason why not to move forward. You're going to find another reason why you shouldn't be doing this after all. You're going to keep going through the loop unless you eliminate the loop altogether. Okay. Do you ruminate about the past? If you are a perfectionist and you're also procrastinating because you're waiting till you're perfect, do you end up ruminating about the past and you have anxiety about the future? You know what I'm talking about? Which, which one is it for you guys? Do you ruminate or is it anxiety? Which one, which one, or do you do both? Drop anxiety in the comments if it's anxiety for you. Drop guilt or shame if you operate from that place. Or maybe you operate from both. Put both in the comments if it's both. Usually, it's, usually we sink into one or the other depending on what we're going through, 
right? <clears throat> do you fear, do you fear abandonment? Do you fear your customers or clients walking away from you? Maybe even after they signed up. Yeah. So can you see, can you see why you have to do the internal work? You got to release the break, release the break. And then you'll fly forward, but most people are afraid of what's gonna happen when they fly forward. Oh, I'm gonna stop again. I'm not gonna be consistent. And, and we talked about this unhealthy sense of responsibility for your customers and your clients. And another word for this is codependency. So I can almost guarantee you that if you're here watching, you have a, a degree of codependency. Is that fair to say? Go ahead and like this video. If this, if this is fair to say, like you, you are codependent maybe with your spouse and you're seeking approval through everyone else in your personal life. So you're seeking approval through your clients rather than results. These are two different sets of behaviors. When you're seeking results for your clients, how do you behave? When you're seeking validation through your clients, how do you behave? Two different versions of you, right? Are you seeking results or validation? Drop one of those in the comments. What are you doing right now? How do you operate? Do you operate, I need validation, or I'm, am I trying to get results for my clients? Which one are you more focused on? What are you doing right now? <clears throat> you see? So you cannot operate a business for a prolonged period of time. You may go on a few years like I did, but eventually you're going to get tired. You're going to get burned out. You're going to be working and being drained by your customers and clients. And then, you know, it got to the point for me and maybe you're there right now. I thought I wasn't cut out for this. Have you guys had this thought before? And it almost, it almost brings up tears for me because it was so, it was like, it was like this weird fight in me. I was like, I know I have to do this, but I don't know if I'm cut out for it. Mm -hmm. Champion. Okay. <laughs> well, let's, let's make you a champion, Joe. Let's make you a champion leader. Let's make you a champion coach. Let's, let's, let's turn you from average to amazing, right? Let's, let's do something. Let's turn you into a champion um, results creator, for your clients, right? So what can you change that to? Change codependent champion to something else that made that fills you up, it makes you feel good, right? So it got me to this point where I was like, should I just quit? Should I just go find another job? Am I not cut out for this? But I knew deep down, I was like, I cannot walk away. Is this where you are right now? Because I know I know this place and it's terrifying, but I'm also here to tell you, and again, this is why this whole group exists. This is why I think I exist, <laughs> is to help people through this place and to stop being codependent in your business, release the enmeshment in your business, the enmeshment with your clients, and start to become that all-star coach, that amazing, magnificent coach who puts themselves out there with, it doesn't matter. We feel fear, do it anyway. While you fear the fear, you do it anyway. And that's where the magic happens. So what needs to shift here? Let's talk about the principles here that need to shift so that you can release this brake. We can pull up the brake on the car, right? And just throttle you forward into your business, into your whatever you're doing right now. Are you doing a mastermind? Are you trying to fill a master class? Are you trying to fill a course? Where where are you where are you guys? What's your current goal in your business now? Drop it in the comments. Let me let me know where you're at. Are you just starting? Are you trying to you utilize Facebook, Facebook ads, Facebook groups? Are you working on a course? Are you uh, doing private sessions? What are you, what, where are you adding your business right now? Drop it down in the comments. And we're going to talk about the solutions here. Okay. So here's what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. 
developing a model. Thank you for sharing, Joe. Awesome, awesome to hear. Let's hear about everybody else's success here. Where are you at in your business right now? This is exciting, right? Where, what, 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 what stage or step are you in right now? What, because you're at a turn, you're at a turning point right now. I can feel it. Just launching. Verna's just launching, starting in April. Awesome to hear. Super exciting news. I bet you're excited. So, what needs to happen? in order for you to start to really polarize and to stop people pleasing and to stop waiting to be perfect and to stop seeking validation. Okay. These are the shifts I made and keep in mind, this doesn't happen overnight, but the more you start to practice these things, it will create a compounding effect over time. That's the beauty of habit change. All you have to do is once you've created a new habit, do it again, now you're cementing the new habit, do it a third time. Now you have three passes. Now your body knows exactly what to do. Usually it just takes three or four passes to really install a new habit. It doesn't take 21 days. It doesn't take seven days. Whatever you've been taught, this is, this is, do not, do not operate by that because you're going to limit yourself. Okay. I, I am a, my background is a board certified hypnotist. I have helped people change habits in one session, in minutes. I've helped, I've had other hypnotists help me in minutes. It does not take, it does not take days, months, and years. You can shift habits really quick just by working properly with the nervous system. Okay. So don't be fooled by this 21 day theory, three week theory, uh, 25 day theory, whatever's out there, come to your own conclusions. I beg you to come to your own conclusion so you don't have to put your life or your business on hold, okay? So the first thing to do is you want to start to close the gap between who you are now, how you're appearing now, and how you want to show up. So that's what I'm here to help you do. And here's what you need to decide for yourself is what is that gap between how you're showing up now and who you want to be showing up as. What's in that gap? And I can guarantee you, things are already starting to come up for you. What needs to change? Do I need to feel more confident? Do I need to raise my prices? Do I need to speak differently? Do I need to dress differently? Do I need to take care of my health in a different way? Do I need to um, have better eye contact, right? What is the gap between who you are now and how you want to show up? who you want to be, the kind of coach, consultant, or leader, or healer that you really want to be? Answer that question, okay? The next piece here, and again, for those of you guys tuning in from Facebook, be sure to join using the uh, link in the description, and that way I can see you and I can engage with you in the comments. The next thing here is to take action, to execute no matter what. This is going to, honestly, guys, if you do nothing else but just execute anyway, you're going to start to see new results. So that moment where you're like, oh, should I, should I post that or should I, should I edit it? Post it. In that moment where you're like, um, you know, should I drop an offer? Should I drop an offer? Should I tell people about my course or my, my class or my business? execute do it anyway do it anyway if you do this if you start to practice this this alone will clean up will clean up the imposter syndrome will clean up the the people pleasing it will just clean itself up but it's going to require you to execute to take action okay the next piece here to start to elite to pull up the brake on your business so you can just skyrocket forward and whatever you need to do, increase your prices, um, do that Facebook Live, put out your course, make an offer, um, do, put out that post that you're hesitating on, put out that class that you're hesitating on, whatever you're hesitating on, do it anyway, okay? Number three is shift your focus. If you really want to defeat procrastination, that's coming from you needing to be perfect. Start to shift your focus to why, like go back to your vision. 
Why are you really doing, why, why are you doing this? Why are you here? In fact, even right now, guys, drop it in the comments. Why are you here? Why are you on this live? And this is going to be the answer to the question for you. Why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you seeking help? Why are you wanting to learn? What, it, what, what was the whole purpose for starting your business? What, or maybe you're getting ready to start. Why? What is your why? Did you start your business so that you could walk on eggshells around people who might not like you? Is that why you started your business, guys? I actually want you to go inside and answer this. Did you start your business to spend the rest of your life walking around on eggshells because you might make some people angry? Is that why you started your business? Yes or no? Yes, now we're getting somewhere. Yes, beautiful. Verna K, to make a positive impact. What else? What else do we have here? What are your, what are your guys' goals with your business? What is more important than appeasing a someone that you may not even know, <laughs> right? Why did you start your business? What is the whole reason why you're here? Because I can guarantee you, you're not putting in this amount of effort just to appease your spouse or just to appease your parents or to appease your kids or your friends or even your audience, guys. Right? Why are you here? Drop it in the comments. Let's feed off each other's energy. Let's feed off each other's energy. Jump in, add to the excitement here. Why did you start your business? Go inside and ask yourself this. And what's coming up for you? I know I started my business because I, I, it hurt me to watch others go through what I had went through. That's, that was the initial trigger was it hurt me to, to watch others go through what I went through. And I said, I, I can't allow this. I have a solution and I can't allow this now. Yep. So Joe says, I spent many years working with my parents who want to continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Now compare that feeling to seeking validation. Which one's more important now, right? So start to shift your attention back to your why. When you're, when you're walking on eggshells, you're wondering, should I do this, shouldn't I? Drop everything, mic drop, and go back to your why. Why, why am I even asking this question at all? What is, what, is, what is the part of me that wants to help? Why, why is, what does that part of me want? Why can't I ignore this itch? Why can't I ignore this itch? These are all really good questions that you can go inside and ask yourself, okay? This is all gonna start creating breakthroughs for you guys, okay? I specifically designed these questions to start to churn ideas in your mind. Even after, this, even after we get off this live stream, start to notice what comes up for you after this live stream, fun stuff. The next, next strategy here is, like we talked about earlier, stop pleasing. And I'm going to break this down. I'm going to break this down. Stop pleasing. So here's what I mean by that. Here's what this looks like. Because I know when I just say that, you're going to get paralyzed. If I just say stop it, <laughs> you're probably going to be like, I don't know. I don't know what that means. Anytime... You're about to edit yourself so, you, so that you can get the reaction that you want, that you want. Don't do anything at all. Okay? Stop doing behaviors that are validation-seeking behaviors. Just stop doing them. Me, which means you have to identify what those behaviors are and don't do it. And instead, ask yourself, what would the me who was putting herself out there or himself, who was ready to go and put themselves out there, 
what would I be doing? How, what, how, what would I be doing instead? How does the me that is not caring about other people's validation, what would that person do? Yeah, start challenging others to find the truth. What else is there? What else is there? Joe, what else is there but truth, right? What else is there? So stop pleasing because these are two different sets of behaviors. And honestly, look, look, here's, here's what I experienced and what really shifted this perfectionism BS, this perfectionism and, and this needing to be perfect bullshit. Here's what became a reality for me. And maybe you're on the verge of discovering this for yourself was that when you are really truly living in your purpose, like when you have gone all into your business and you're that leader, you're that coach, you're that consultant, you're that healer, you have that audience, you're engaging with your audience in positive ways. There is no time. There's no time to go and see who likes you and who doesn't. Are you guys hearing that? I don't have time to go see who likes me and who doesn't. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> I'm too busy coming up with content, with planning out the next live stream, which putting together my next post, creating another training, putting out another video, working with customers and clients. Guys, do you have time for this? Ask yourself this now. If you're a business owner, you don't have time for this. There is no time to go back and crawl and cry and be sad because people are offended. You don't have time. You're leaving money on the table. You're leaving money on the table when you are going and looking for validation, when you are going to see if people give you a thumbs up or a doggy treat, or you're waiting for that pat on the back, I was keeping myself broke by fearing putting myself out there. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? You guys know what I'm talking about? Put broke in the comments if, if, you, are, if you know what I'm talking about broke in the comments if you are like if you're scraping by if you're if you're living paycheck to paycheck customer to customer and you're struggling because you are so busy worrying about should i are they gonna like me are they gonna are they gonna like my post am i gonna get any comments are people gonna show up to my videos are people gonna click my link yeah you're leaving money on the table by focusing on being nice or ap approving or appeasing. Yeah. Guys, you don't have time for this. You don't have time. I don't have time to please. I don't have time to people please. <laughs> I don't have the energy to people please. It's gone. <laughs> so my question for you all is, how much more time needs to go by? How much more energy do you have to drain? How much more stress do you need to deal with until you stop and you just mic drop? And now it's time to go all in. Now it's time to run your business full steam ahead. Now it's time to be real and not just pretend. Now it's time to be a real person, not just a pretend person. Do you want people to like the real you or do you want people to like the pretend version of you? Who do you want to work with? Who do you want to be at? Do you want to work with clients who like the pretend version of you or who like the real version of you? Because keeping that mask on is very exhausting. I did it for a long time myself. Yeah. So how much more time needs to go by until it's time? to go all in, to serve the people who want your help. Serve the people who want your help. Not the people who are gonna judge you, not the people who are gonna sit back and cynicize, not the people who are gonna sit back and 
and make you wrong, that's not your audience. Let them go. Let them go. Let them eliminate themselves from your process. They will go. There's a door. They can exit. Right? So what are the final stages in this now? What, what are the final little pieces we can wrap up here? Is that here are the tangible steps you can take, guys. So you can go all in, go increase your prices, go, go out there and speak your mind. Your clients, your customers, your future customers are waiting for you. They're like, where are you? Who else are they going to go to? Who else are, are your customers going to go to? So the next step here is you want to start to separate yourself from your critic. Are you guys doing this work right now? Are you separating yourself from your inner critic? That is the first tangible step you can start to take right now, today, after this call. Start to separate yourself from your inner critic. Start to look at your inner critic, hear your inner critic from a more observatory place than from, it, oh, this is who I am. Because it's not you. It's a voice that we all have. Okay? So that's the first step here. Next thing. Start to tune in and keep track of your thoughts. And the way you're really going to build this muscle is through mindfulness. And I've talked about mindfulness in the past. However, now that we have a ton of new members here, we're going to talk about mindfulness again. How many of you want to learn more about how to do mindfulness properly? Go ahead, put mindful in the comments. Is this something you guys want to learn more about? Like not just doing mindfulness, but doing it actually in a way where you're actually feeling and seeing results. Like you're actually dissociating from your, your inner critic. You're actually not getting charged up by your spouse or your kids or not getting that client. You're not getting charged up on sales calls. You're not getting charged up or nervous by, um, you know, not closing that next client or not not getting that next payment. Because most people practice mindfulness very ineffectively. They're not, magazines do not teach you what a hypnotist can teach you. Because what I teach you here is how to re-hypnotize yourself for success. Call it whatever you want. Uh, hypnosis, re rewiring yourself, retraining your mind, it's all the same thing but re rewiring yourself so you no longer get triggered by money, you no longer get triggered by clients, you no longer get triggered by not closing that client, you don't get triggered right before you get on a sales call, you don't get triggered by um, people walking away and saying no to your program. It just, it's like whatever, let me just move right along. I'm just gonna move right along, yeah. So we'll definitely talk about more about mindfulness. One of my favorite things to talk about and is the ultimate, if you do nothing else, build a mindfulness practice, guys. 20 minutes a day, mindfulness, do not skip a day. You will not get the results if you're not consistent, okay? And we'll talk about mindfulness in the future. You can also go to my YouTube channel. I have few videos about mindfulness there. I break it down and what to do. Um, Convert with convert, cl convert with confidence with Lydia Catherine. You'll find my YouTube channel. The next step here is to start to accept who you are now. And I know I just said a mouthful there. I know I just said a mouthful. Is to start a forgiveness practice. A start accepting, being okay with is another way to say. It. Start to be okay with who you are now, what you get to learn. We are all learning here. Have you noticed nobody in the world is perfect yet? Have you noticed that nobody in the world is perfect yet? Or are you about to realize that nobody in this world is perfect? We are all learning. We are all falling on our faces. We are all getting back up. Well, not everybody, but I'm guessing you guys here are wanting to get back up, right? So start to 
be okay and accept who you are now and what you get to learn and what you're excited about learning. That's going to start to turn off this, this need for other people's approval and appeasing. Next step here. These are all habits that I've created and I'm going to help you all walk you through as we go on this journey is to stop comparing yourself to others, guys. Stop comparing yourself to others. Do you say things like, well, that person knows me more than me there, and I know more than that person here, and they know more about that than me, and then this and that and this and all these, you know. <laughs> Stop doing this. Eliminate this habit, and you can. I've eliminated this habit. I don't compare. It may start... Again, it's an old habit. It will be there on a subconscious level. But when you catch it, when you start to catch it, it starts to turn itself back off. And I have really dissolved it away for the most part. It doesn't interfere with my decision making anymore, at least. So stop comparing yourself. Stop eliminate it. It does not make you look better. It does not make the other person look better. There's always this one up, one down situation, right? There's always a one up, one down. Somebody always has to be up and somebody always has to be down. It doesn't ever work. Comparing yourself will never serve you guys. It will never serve you. Never. It will just drain you. And again, these are one of the brakes that you have on in the car. So stop comparing yourself to others. Okay. Next thing, next point here, next principle to eliminating this is to, to start to validate yourself. Again, I know I just said a mouthful. We'll talk about more about this in the future. But start to validate yourself. Instead of waiting for someone else to tell you you're an amazing coach or you're amazing at what you do, tell yourself that. I have, I have an affirmation on my board. You can't see it right here but I have a dry erase board and it says, I am an awesome coach on my dry erase board. Go put an affirmation, come up with an affirmation, plaster it on your fridge, plaster it in your office. And that is, you've made a decision. That is who I am no matter what. And if I ever forget it, I will go back to this. Okay. So come up with an affirmation so you can get validation from within and go plaster it somewhere, okay guys? You know what I'm talking about? If you're ready to do this, put the word um, affirmation in the comments. What, put affirmation in the comments if you're gonna go create your affirmation right after this meeting, right after this call. Are you gonna go put affirm in the comments? If you're ready to go, get your affirmation. This is gonna be like an emotional anchor for you. It's gonna anchor you to self-assurance, right? Are you ready to go get your affirmation? Put it in the comments. Put affirm in the comments or affirmative. Perfect. Awesome. Go do it. Follow through on this. And the last point here, last point here, and then I'm out of here, is to allow yourself to experiment. Guys, allow yourself to take imperfect action. Take imperfect action. Fumble around, fall on your face, waste money, right? Go accidentally put too much money there. Go talk to the wrong client there. Go put out a crappy, shaky uh, post you don't think is good enough. Go put it out. Go put it out. Go put out that email that you don't think is going to get any engagement. Go do it. Allow yourself to take imperfect action, okay? So come up with your affirmation after this and... What is the next imperfect action you're going to take today? How are you going to go be imperfect today? And if you need help with this, if you are looking for more guidance with this and you want to reach out and see if what I have is a good fit for you, go ahead and drop help in the comments below and we can see if what I have is a good fit for you. If you got value out of this video, let me know. Drop the word value below this video. Let me know if this was of value to you and you're ready. You're going to take what you learned here today and you're going to go forward 
and start to eliminate this procrastination and eliminate this perfectionism. And again, drop the word help. If you are looking for more personalized guidance with this, we'll see if what I have is a good fit for you. If you drop the word help below, here is what will happen. Someone from my team or me personally will reach out to you via direct message and we will contact you uh, either tonight or tomorrow and we'll see if what, what I have is a good fit for you. And if not, we'll definitely give you another resource to go to. So either way, it's a win-win. If you're not ready for what I have, let's, let's get you on track somewhere else so that you're moving forward, okay? So drop value if this has been as help. Drop help if you are actually looking for more help. Thanks for being here, guys, and continue to watch, to continue to engage. Friend request me if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next week, and I'll see you guys in the group, okay? Talk to you later.